Uh, hello everyone, uh, we will be uh, doing our X Jazz Festival a week prior to what we, from uh, when we always do. And we will be going online this year because of what we are having in uh, 2020. And uh, I have some dear friends um, from different organizations and uh, countries uh, for our first panels. Uh, uh, Eric Birat from uh, Stockholm, he is the CEO for uh, our beloved Fashion and Stockholm Jazz Festival. Uh, Francesca from uh, European Jazz Network, uh, she is the coordinator of a big family uh, of jazz festivals, venues and associations, let's say. Uh, Harun Izar, uh, he is the director of Istanbul Jazz Festival, whom I've worked uh, also uh, I mean, where I worked also for years as an artist guide uh, when I was a bit younger than this. And Nadine from uh, Jazz Fest Berlin, she is the artistic director uh, of uh, one of the two jazz festivals uh, in Berlin. And I'm from X Jazz. Uh, so I could maybe start with Francesca and then Nadine has a limited time because of other duties. Maybe I could leave the next question to Nadine. There is a case that Nadine might leave at the end of our <laughs> uh, panel, uh, but we'll see. Uh, Francesca, uh, how, how does it feel uh, to see all these different measures from different countries? I mean, uh, as, as the center of the uh, European Jazz Network, I mean, that's what you guys do always. You see all the different uh, reactions from countries, but in a moment like this, uh, I'm, I'm also attending the think tank meetings of uh, European Jazz Network for the COVID uh, situation. And it's uh, really fascinating to me to see all these reactions. Uh, what do you think? Hello, everybody. Uh, so yes, as Murat said, we are uh, having a think tank meeting of a group of EGN members every week and every week we have been uh, since four weeks we have been speaking about national measures in every in every country and and we are also collecting this information through a survey we sent to all our members so what we see now is that the measures are changing all, all, all the time every country has different measures not in terms of lockdown also in terms of lockdown and and reopening and everything, but mostly the measures taken to support, let's say the, 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 the business, uh, every kind of business, but in this particular situation, business, let's say uh, the companies and the organizations, clubs, venues, festivals, and all events. And what, what we see is that uh, this is, a, let's say, a work in progress because things are always changing. So some measures that were taken three weeks ago have already changed. Or uh, there are some countries where there aren't real measures or government are still talking about what to do, how to support artists, musicians, organizations. And, and so th 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 there are so many different kinds of, of, of measures taken. And that depends also on the on the let's say the the wellness <laughs> uh, well-being of every country of course because we see that uh, we saw that in germany the government decided to give, to give uh and nadine you correct you correct me if i'm, I'm wrong but we saw that there was like a a, a fee a high fee given to uh, to to the workers to the organizers to to, to every, almost to everyone. Mm. Why in Italy, for example, and I live in Italy, but I, I could talk about also other countries. Well, in Italy, we have been promised, let's say, uh, some, some fees, but very low fee. And it depends on, on the kind of work you do. So it's, uh, we see there are many, there are many differences and, and there are many things changing every week or maybe, I, I don't say every day, but every week at least we have we have different uh, statements from the government all around Europe. Uh, I have a question here for you also. Uh, 
we discussed this in the think tank as well, but was there a possibility of a mutual European reaction to all this? I mean, like bureaucratic wise, uh, was this, you know, like the, let's say the uh, cultural policy makers of Europe was like, hey, let's act on this together. I mean, was this some sort of a possibility? Yeah, as EJN, uh, we are in touch with uh, the European Commission, let's say, uh, about, the, the, about the projects, the European projects under the Creative Europe program. That means that we can work uh, with, with them, we can uh, give them some suggestions, proposals regarding the, their actions on, on the projects. So cooperation projects, network projects, and, uh, um, and platform projects. What, what we, we can't do, or at least we don't have the power to do, is to, to talk about uh, every single country policies because the cultural policies uh, depends on the local, on the national government. So, of course, we, we have signed several statements together with the other European networks in the cultural field, let's say. Uh, we have signed several statements and to ask the European Commission to be flexible, um, to be flexible on the projects that are ongoing. For, as you know, for example, EJN is uh, supported by Creative Europe uh, uh, to organize all our activities uh, involving all of you, all of you members. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, we, we, are, we are not in the position to ask the European Commission to support, let's say, directly uh, the, 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 the national uh, cultural policies because that, that depends on the national government. So what we are suggesting also to our members uh, uh, is to try and apply again for the project, European projects, because there are and there will be some calls. So all, all that our members and all, all the professionals around, all, all the organizers can join forces and uh, create artistic projects uh, to support the artists, to support their activities, uh, and they can and they should write new projects and apply for the for funds. But again, these 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 are funds given from the uh, Creative Europe program to projects, to joint projects. Regarding the national policies, it's it's uh, it depends on. Of, of course, if anyone can lobby. The, 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 the own politicians, and then it's the, it's the politicians, the national politicians who has to work with the European Commission. That, that, that's useful for sure. But what we can do as EJN is, again, uh, act as an umbrella organization to, uh, let's say, to ask flexibility, to ask for a solidarity from the European Commission. This is what we are doing. And, and, and yes, also this is a work in progress. We are still writing and, you know, and, and also changing the statement according to what, what happens from week to week. Because again, uh, at the beginning of March, nobody would have thought, imagined all this. We were, we, yes, we were thinking about something, but could, have you, imag could you have imagined all this? This is a huge, this is a huge thing that will, will have an impact. Now, it's having an impact now, but will have a long-term impact for sure, for sure. Uh, I'll be, uh, with the nature of this talk, it will be a bit jumping from topic to topic, but within the same theme, um, so that maybe we could raise some eyebrows and questions in people's minds. But I will connect this to the, a socially distant walk uh, we did with Nadine a few days ago. Uh, we had a nice chat and you know exchanged ideas. It felt good to me. Uh, and uh, she, I mean, like Nadine, you don't have to give all the details to the idea because I'm sure it's kind of a work in progress. But uh, I really uh, liked your uh, international uh, solidarity angle. Uh, 
you know, would you like to, would you like to just uh, say a few words about it? How you feel about what this idea uh, that you have in your mind? Well, I unmuted myself. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting all of us and for having us. It's a great initiative and great idea. And uh, I'm your neighbor and I'm so sorry that you needed to cancel your X-Jazz Festival. So I, I kind of, we are all festival makers, cultural operators, and I kind of can imagine how that feels that you prepared a whole festival, you did all of this work, like there is this one moment in, in each year for, for a festival, this peak moment, and all of a sudden the world is changing dramatically as Francesca also already said, and then you kind of need to improvise or just face reality. And in your case, um, the excess would have taken place in May and the government decided that no cultural events in Germany can take place in this period and maybe also for longer. I think at the moment it's until end of July for everything and for bigger events, having more spectators than 1000, it's until end of August and then we'll see further. And yes, concerning myself, I mean, to be in this, in uh, to live this period as a human being and also as a as a festival maker, it's very very intense and and it's also, it's it's such a big big challenge. And I realized like ki kind of trying to plan a festival in this time. Our festival is planned for beginning November from the fifth to the eighth of November, and in this uh, time of the year, usually we would have nearly a whole festival program ready, of course. You know, we, we have a, we are planning like six months ahead, like kind of usually for the last 56 years, <laughs> not me, but the Jazz Fest is that old already and has its uh, rules and rhythms and logics and partners and everything. And everything is now, of course, turned upside down because of the crisis. We try to, we, I mean, you, you constantly need to adapt and to also understand as a, first of all, as a human being, I, I would say as a citizen of uh, Berlin, Germany and Europe, what's going on? I mean, and it's a worldwide global crisis. And until you realize, at least it was the case for me, and I also think for many, many others, I'm so grateful that the Europe Jazz Network um, took the initiative to bring us all together like colleagues that we can speak to each other like it's a it's a it's so important to exchange ideas and to kind of stay connected in this time of extreme isolation and home office and homeschooling and all of this so as Fran francesca said and and also you Murat, uh it's six weeks ago uh, that the world started to be a different one for for us in in europe and in germany and in berlin it's only six weeks ago and it hit us in our very intense uh, period of festival planning and and you want to find solutions right you want to kind of come up with ideas like how to solve it as you used to do it and then you react on 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 all of the dangers that might also um of all or you react on all of these new conditions and think about okay how could a festival be possible? It's only now that we know for a few days uh, in Germany that um, all of the, as I said, venues and all of the festivals have been canceled until end of July and big ones until end of August. And that all of this physical uh, distance rules and the, uh, the other rules will be in place until for, for probably another whole year until there is a vaccine and that the coronavirus might be not that dangerous anymore for all of us so and again we we then i mean this is so many changes at the same time and you are so confused and overwhelmed by everything that's taking place that uh, we kind of try to find and create and shape scenarios and then we failed and we did it again and we failed and we are failing again and again because i think we are still and now that changed and and our walk murat that we just did a few days ago and it's own for me it's on it's only one or two weeks long now that i'm talking finally to others that you are kind of stepping out of this complete shock 
of digesting and understanding and think like, I need to talk, I need to see my colleagues, my friends, musicians, and you can't solve this alone. It's impossible. It's too big, I think. And, and, and you also told me, you, you said something very inspiring to me. I don't know if you realized, sometimes we don't realize what, what impact some sentences could have. And you said like, the Jazz Fest takes place in November and you shouldn't miss the time that we are in and facing right now. November may be too late at some point and maybe you shouldn't even think about doing any kind of concert. Just think about to do something else. And of course we do this, we think about everything and stuff. And in a way, now in, 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 to try to find a way, we also thought about going local as some other colleagues are doing it to kind of develop a festival series, a festival edition that is mainly representing or only representing local artists. And we all know that the scene in Berlin is a very, very diverse and, and, and marvelous scene. So it would still be quite international because lots of international musicians are living in Berlin. It wouldn't be just a German festival, so to say. But then again, I was thinking like, what is the history of the Jazz Fest Berlin? And this very long history, like being nearly 60 years old, has a very strong connection to the United States of America and also to African-American uh, artists and the jazz community in the States and in Europe also for the last, let's say, 20, 30 years. And it is, a, it is an international festival. And it was, again, a colleague with whom I chatted Edin from Sarajevo who's running the Sarajevo Jazz Festival who with whom whose festival is taking place at the same period uh, than the Jazz Festival also at the beginning of November and he really like told me Nadine Edin is a very convinced a very strong person very emotional person and he said like Nadine don't even think about going local with the Jazz Fest Berlin don't do this because you are you are part of of a, of, a, of a quite big and established institution and you have public money and if others need to do this, this is fine, but we can't give up our international environment. This art form is, a, is, an, is an international art form and there is a very strong connection to, to other countries. And if you would give up this now as, a, as an automatic response to the crisis, everybody would understand and of course, the chance that your festival could take place at the beginning of November is higher because of possible travel restrictions between countries within Europe and of course between Europe and the United States. Nobody knows what the situation will be in, in not even three weeks, four weeks, not in three months and, and of course not in, in five or six months time. So of course it, it may be that tra artists can't travel. And Eden then said, I am living in a, in a democracy, democracy in, in Sarajevo that is quite fragile. And look what's happening in Hungary. In Hungary, then I talked with a colleague in Hungary, Budapest Music Center. They also said, like, if we kind of have this reaction now to, to, kind, of, uh, to kind of focus too much on our local or regional or national scene, we can put the... We can we would put the international dimension and also self-understanding of our art form into danger. And in fragile democracies, or let's say in Hungary, what's happening over there in Hungary, politically speaking, everybody knows it's more and more turning into a dictatorship, what's happening, happening in Hungary. And also these colleagues told me that bigger platforms or any kind of, of, of um, platform also has a symbolic value and if jazz, the Jazz Fest would not automatically turn into a local event from the outside perspective it could also be seen or could also be perceived in a very negative way because what we see now in our society and also politically speaking is not only solidarity it's kind of isolation that we as human beings are now facing with all of the lockdowns, but it's also kind of isolation on a national level because all of the borders are established again, even within a country, it's kind of isolation. We are in Germany not allowed to go to Mecklenburg-Vorpommern because we are living in a federal state. And this country of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, they shut down all of their so-called inner German countries to save 
their population from Corona. So within Germany, there are different rules from country to country and within the European Union, of course, intercontinental. And it also serves populists and nationalism to raise. The big question is, could these, I mean, yeah, the, the question is, can we reopen all of these borders and, and reestablish internationalism as easy as we are about to, to shut it down and close it? So this is why with the Jazz Fest, now we, yeah, we try to kind of do our very best to maintain any international dimension, cooperations. We are now trying, we are on, our, on, a, on a journey. The Jazz Fest might start within a few days or weeks or whatsoever. You can question out all of the, the, all of the rules of our society and also of our business in a way. So we are kind of more interested in processes now than in results because we don't know which kind of result we can deliver in November. And now I talked a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it was perfect actually. And if you have a note, uh, then I will go, I'm going to add something. This is just well, yeah. I have a question for Nadine. I mean, I think it's a really interesting perspective, as you say, I mean, the whole international aspect of the jazz scene is of course, uh, a part of any festival, but have you, what have you landed in that you won't go ahead and do the festival unless you can do a fully international festival? No, no, no. I'm, I'm also not telling people what to think. I'm not judging. I'm, I'm, I, we don't know. We will try to kind of, oh, sorry. Uh, we lost Ladina. I think she will come back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna get her in the room. Uh, I'll ju I'll just add that uh, while she's out. Uh, I mean, the 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 angle that she's approaching to this is actually uh, pretty uh, fascinating. Yes, she's back. Hello, Nadine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm right? sorry. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm muting, yeah. so you could reply. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not saying do this or that, or it should only be international or not. We are now trying to find ways of, we still have six months ahead, right? To our planned festival time, let's say. And as I said, I think we will now, we, we need an exchange. We need to come up with ideas to act again because what I see and what is completely understandable, what, what I also experience with myself is, um, is that everybody kind of, I mean, you know, it's, it's depending on, on the time that you still have. X-Jazz, of course, a festival that, that needed to be canceled in a way can react on this crisis in a different way than we can because X-Jazz festival had, was already planned and we still have time to kind of react now we are our planning is taking place in this very situation of this new crisis and the only thing that i try to do now is to kind of put pressure off from our shoulders to just come up with quick ideas and solutions in order to get a re result as as far and as professional and as nice as as we knew it and as we are also used to do it and what I'm trying to do, what we are trying to do now is to kind of think about possible ideas of how to kind of develop, um, how, to, how, how can we contribute to new ideas, to develop new ideas between analog and digital productions? How can we, what, what possibilities would be there to maintain international cooperations and the international environment in our festivals? Um, these are like, I think we need to talk. I think we need to think together. I think we should do this in a very diverse group uh, of, of people because it's the whole sector that is deeply involved. It's, it's including artists, organizers, agents, uh, label, labels. It's kind of because maybe this situation as it is right now would last for even longer than the next 12 months. You know, now everybody says there might be a vaccine by spring next year. And then the logic would be, okay, by spring next year, if there might be, a, if there is a vaccine, then we can finally get back to normal. But what is, I mean, it, 
that's also the question. Is that possible then? Or, uh, or would the world be a different one? Would we kind of uh, act in a different way as human beings, as, as citizens, as also, also as festival makers? These are, and what I'm saying is, I'm not saying everybody should go international. It's really depending on, on your own, um, on your own situation, a club, a, a, a music club that has hardly any funding or not at all, is in a very, very different situation than a privately funded festival or, or uh, a publicly funded one. So I'm not saying do this or that, or it's, it's not a black or white uh, scenario I'm proposing. It's just um, to kind of see the, the challenges ahead and to, to not automatically reply on these challenging on the on these challenges in maybe the most obvious way uh, we thank you very much nadine uh, i think again this is going to raise a lot of question marks in people's uh, heads and i think it's a, a, it's an idea that uh, in smaller groups also in european jazz network and others uh, people could really uh, work on uh, when when I see the when I see the crisis, I always uh, try to imagine the whole humanity as one human being, and it's so funny to see each of these uh, organizations and people's reactions are. Let's say uh, some of us is running for the short-term solutions, which is acute, which is super needed. Some of them are thinking really ahead. Uh, I mean, when I spoke with you uh, a few days ago. This international angle was really not my first concern because, as you just mentioned, uh, I mean, each of us has different uh, priorities and uh, how do you say needs. I'm going to connect this to uh, Harun uh, because some of you, I mean, some of your words also come to the spring fall, I mean, uh, the, the fall 2020 uh, period. Istanbul Jazz Festival has announced that uh, the festival won't be taking place on July, and that was the uh, that was the announcement. So, uh, Harun, what do you guys have in mind? Do you think that uh, I mean a festival like Istanbul Jazz Festival uh, could happen uh, at this period? And I mean, would you also uh, resonate to what Nadine is thinking? Yes. Uh, first of all, again, thanks for getting us together. I think all these kind of dialogues are quite important and helping a lot. Like when listening to Francesca right now and also Nadine, I've been taking some small notes and these have been also sparking some nice ideas while we are talking. So it's useful and it's uh, like, it is, uh, it's a ver similar to work in progress. This is a change in progress right now and we are trying to uh, we are just living it it's not something that is finished right now we're just in it and it's happening so we need to uh, every moment we need to gather information process it and see where it is leading and try to understand where this could lead us so it's a change in progress not something already happened and finished so in this respect, uh, as you said, we recently announced uh, the postponement of, of our festival due to various reasons we have to, I mean, at least for the moment, we have to uh, present the festival in 2020. Whereas I can see that a lot of uh, international festivals, European festivals, etc., are also postponing directly to the next year, which was for certain reasons not possible for us. So we have to, as, at least as far as possible, we have to present our festival in 2020, in, within the year. So we decided to postpone uh, the events to some time during the year. Why is that, may I ask? Uh, why do you have to do the festival? Do you have to, you have to yeah. represent it? Different reasons, as I said, uh, but mostly uh, because of our agreements with our sponsors and how the festival is uh, produced and presented. So we had, I mean, we, we thought that it would be much better to be able to at least have our uh, 2020, the 17th edition of the festival within the year, basically. And 
well, it's not so easy to just say it and make it happen uh, because uh, there are different factors affecting that. The, the artists' availabilities, venues, uh, or also actually the biggest problem is that the future is not so much known or there are too many unknown or uncertain issues to the near future, to the next six months, let's say. Uh, as mentioned, I mean, we also follow the European scene very closely, which is um, in a way also culturally more related to us, let's say. Uh, and we've seen that most of European uh, events, as Francesca said, I guess, like most of the events are not allowed until June or beginning of July in different countries in Europe. And then uh, for bigger gatherings, above 500,000, there are different criteria in different countries I heard, but most of them are also bigger events uh, as defined. Uh, they are not allowed until uh, late August, early September, etc. for the moment, and this could also change. So we are expecting also something similar, so that was the reason that we had to cancel and keep uh, and we also don't know when the venues are going to be open here, when people will feel secure, etc. And here we are also trying to, uh, in our foundation, which is an umbrella foundation, maybe similar to Berlin Air Festspiele, where Nadine's uh, Just West Berlin is located. It's a, uh, it's a foundation which organizes different events, uh, film festival, theater festival, classical music festival, two biennials, etc. So we are also trying to see for all these different events, my colleagues in other departments, and we are talking to each other. And I feel something similar to what Nadine said, actually, um, personally, uh, that I had to, I wasn't able to get in touch with a lot of people for the first few weeks, and then later on, kind of woke up and started to uh, create these ties again with the international or my colleagues locally, regionally, internationally. And we, we were also, also talking a lot within the com uh, company, the foundation actually, within the foundation about what to do. And we are now uh, coming to that level where we are trying to see alternative solutions, always considering in mind that this is, as I said, a change in progress and something with we consider possible right now might not be possible like in the next two weeks or next month whereas something that looks like unlikely for the moment could be actually possible or we can come up to different interesting scenarios so um yeah and everything is connected to like uh, internally uh, we have a club venue a small club venue in the, in our foundation's building called Salon, like 300, 500, uh, 350 capacity, which is a more day-by-day uh, -day running organization, closed right now, actually. Uh, but with our colleagues in Salon or in different departments, we are slowly uh, trying to make some uh, think tanks uh, or idea groups or trying to form some ideas how next steps could be, how uh, next um, um, the next uh, part of the pandemic, like we're going to have a pandemic. Uh, we are right now in the pandemic, global pandemic uh, time, let's say. And then there will be a time when there is a slow opening up in every country. So some uh, operations will be allowed, some operations won't be allowed. What are we going to do at that time? When the venues and clubs are opened, what are we going at that time again? Uh, because what will the reactions of the audience be, etc. There are a lot of uh, a lot of different questions for each period uh, of uh, this change, actually, and we need to talk about them and we need to find ways about them uh, or find ways to uh, get around them or make what we do possible during these periods coming up to the, uh, if possible, a real normalization. But as we also see from the reports, it will take like at least a year, maybe even more than a few years. So we need to come up with uh, some good scenarios, alternatives, ideas, how we can do what we did until this time 
uh, as much as possible. And just maybe a small thing to add, like uh, we should also think about the bigger uh, aim of what we are doing right now. What I mean, coming back to the basics, why are we doing this? What are what are we doing? We are trying to get people together to be artists, or like we are trying to create ways for culture to read people uh, to reach people so maybe from these very basic questions we can come to interesting solutions to continue what we are actually trying to do in maybe different ways but with a similar result as before so that's something also an idea that also developed right now while i was thinking to my colleagues but also something that i have in mind for some time right now I, I like the uh, going back to the basics uh, situation and I would like to mention that Istanbul Jazz Festival has started a really cool thing called, correct me Harun if I'm wrong, Wiki Marathon. Uh, I, I mean, first I'm going to explain in my eyes uh, without him explaining. It's like as we stop right now, I mean, let's just <laughs> make our times useful kind of situation. And they noticed that the Turkish artists, most of them, let's say the jazz musicians, uh, they don't have Wikipedia pages. So uh, they uh, mobilized, Nadine, actually, you would like this kind of an idea. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, like they, they are now mobilizing people to fill in these Wikipedia pages. I mean, the fir first moment I saw it was like, oh, fuck, this is a really good idea, you know. Uh, Harun, would you like to uh, just uh, put some extra notes on that? Sure, very short. I mean, basically, what you are saying is right. We just tried to coincide this with the International Jazz Day, so it's going to be a, a, an online event similar to this, this Zoom session uh, for four hours from 4 p.m. Istanbul time to 8 p.m. And uh, the, I mean, this is not a, a really uh, our idea. There are there have been a lot of wiki marathons in the recent years. Especially in the um, feminist field, there had been a lot of action about that. So that was also one of my first uh, introduction to this Wiki Marathon thing. That where my one of my colleagues started a feminist Wiki Marathon on the 8th of March uh, a few years ago, and uh, then we also had this idea that while we are actually we had this planned before uh, the press meeting, so this is something we wanted to do in physically in a room where we could gather people with their laptops etc and work and read from books and type in about the artist but then uh, after the pandemic started uh, we thought we can still do that online it's possible I mean, all, what we need is just internet access and we can get together people to learn about how to uh, use wikipedia online uh, our editor friends from Wiki, Wiki, uh, wikimedia turkey will help us explaining about how Wikipedia is used, etc., for the newbies, for those who don't know much about it. And it's going to be an event about, I mean, we had to, uh, to limit our scope. It cannot be just everything at, at the same time. So we said, let's do this uh, to fill in the missing information about Turkish jazz, mu jazz musicians from Turkey in the Turkish Wiki Wikipedia pages. But this can be implemented in every way. Uh, Eric, it will be your turn anyways. <laughs> so uh, after uh, uh, my question to Eric, we will uh, wrap the, into the, the panel up. And I will just quickly ask you guys how you feel uh, today, like as of now. Uh, but Eric, to, uh, first you could maybe comment on Harun's point. Secondly, uh, you guys are like at the spotlight of Europe and the, I mean like I'm going on logging into Reuters uh, United States or CNN. I see is Stockholm being success, I mean Sweden being success successful in the majors or not, you know. You guys are, uh, have played a bet. How is that going? How does that affect your uh, business? and? You have you are also running a club plus the jazz festival, so you would be a perfect fit for uh, having a say in all of this. 
yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the question is who is who is actually running the bet? You know, is it Sweden or is it the rest of the world? I think it's too it's too early to say. You know, and uh, obviously, you know, we have we have more we have more deaths than our neighboring countries. Um, for what reasons? You know, that's always debated. We've got it into uh, it's mainly, of course, elderly people, and it's in the homes where they where they live together. So that's that's where like more than fifty percent of the casualties are, and it's it's sad, of course. But um, but I mean, the rest of the country is not in the same kind of lockdown. But I mean, everyone is encouraged to work from home. And since you know the whole cultural life has stopped, the restaurants have stopped. Uh, you can't meet more than fifty people at one time. It basically means no one's going to stores and no one's going to any kind of um, cultural activities or sports or anything like that. So um, you know we've been working from home since mid March. Um, our schools are still open, so I think that makes life seem kind of more. Uh, pretty normal because you know the kids are away in the day and they're maybe not as affected by um, by the by this uh, by the pandemic which i think is is good and um yeah i mean that way also i mean in the long run you know they won't have to go to school maybe during the summer and stuff like that which which is going to be easier for us but um i mean i think You've all both, all, everyone has touched on the same kind of thing. And it's also, you know, the main concern is the unpredictability of, of everything. Like, we don't know for how long this lockdown is going to be. Uh, there's some measures that you can do now that uh, could be changed next week and so on. Um, but, I mean, we're running a club. I mean, in, in that sense, it's more, I feel, very responsible because we have quite a lot of employees employees as well so first of all I mean one of my main concerns is of course the, the artistic angle of everything and the artists that we at the moment are not able to employ but also the people that I you know that are depending on our club for their wages you know and to pay their rent so that's my main concern and I'm spending the days now trying to apply for uh, funds from the government and the municipality to see what we can uh, get from them. Fortunately, the club has been going quite well in the past year, so we've managed to put some money aside that we were gonna use you know, for like future renovations and buying a new grand piano and these kinds of things. But of course, that's now just going into surviving. Um, the only activity that we're doing at the club, I mean, the, the, the people that are still employed, they're f are for loan, so they're you know, working much less than average but you know we're painting and cleaning and doing this kind of stuff and then uh, about twice a week we're streaming concerts um and in sweden you have this thing called swish i don't think it exists in so many other countries where people can just use their phone and like send money to a telephone number so we've been getting quite a lot of funds that way uh, i mean enough to just pay the bands actually a decent fees you know as much as they would uh, get in the club um we're not making any money but at the same time you know we're losing so much money every month so that if we made like you know 500 euros a a, a night on streamed concerts it wouldn't make a difference you know because at the rate we're going now we're losing about 50 to 60 thousand euro uh, euros a month so um yeah i mean it's it's kind of like just a game to prolonging like a like a marathon you know we don't know how long we're going to be able to last uh, our predictions are that if we don't get any governmental help we will last until um, September October hopefully uh, we will be open by then but who knows um, yeah and <clears throat> Stockholm Jazz Festival is taking place in October and as Nadine was saying you know at this moment we should have had uh, our schedule already completed. Um, we have a schedule semi-completed and we've actually released some artists, but of course for the past two months we haven't been selling any tickets. So, you know, we don't want to release any new names because there's no point. No one's buying any tickets at the moment. 
So, you know, we might as well prolong until we know. And then of course, we have lots of international artists booked and uh, we don't know what's happening with that. Um, I'm thinking now we, our program will be Scandinavian, if that's possible. If not, they will be mostly Swedish and maybe we'll do some cooperations between like streams and local musicians and st sort of that kind of stuff. Uh, also thinking about doing, um, you know, just like to put the spotlight on, on the genre a bit. Uh, you could uh, use movies or other things, you know, talks, that kind of stuff. So, um, but of course, I mean, this is still, we don't know, you know, it's like, should we start hunting a big uh, movie program right now and trying to complete that in June? And then in August, they said, well, you can open, you know? So it's, it's difficult to know like which leg you should stand on. Yeah, and um, I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty much what uh, the situation is like over here. Uh, Hashing is uh, one of my favorite places uh, on earth. I mean, I think it's like a guaranteed good quality uh, time. Uh, and I hope that uh, you guys will find a way to uh, make it happen again. Uh, this year, if X Jazz would happen, uh, we would host the... Uh, a series of concerts called Fashing Meets Berlin, Fashing Meets X Jazz Berlin, uh, something like that we would call it. And we would have the whole fashion team uh, presenting shows at X Jazz and we would do the opposite. I hope that, you know, those days will be, uh, will come back again. Uh, we're going to wrap it all up. I mean, I feel that, you know, we could discuss for hours uh, on these topics and I mean, Nadine's and, you know, Harun's points, they could even be, you know, separate, uh, how do you say, uh, talks. Uh, but uh, as we are a just community of, again, like a family, we spend time together. I mean, share private life and, I mean, private topics as well. So I'm curious also how you guys, you know, feel these days. Maybe we could start with Eric and go back to the, how do you say, go towards Nadine, the opposite way. I mean, just, you know, friend talk, how do you feel today, Eric? I mean, I, I, th I think, I mean, today I feel fine, but I think in general, you know, I'm the same as everyone else, uh, going from sometimes scared of, uh, of the disease to sometimes wanting to give it the finger and just say like, you know, ah, screw this, let's open up already, let's, you know, be free. But, uh, you know, I'm longing to see my parents and for my kids to be able to meet their grandparents, this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, I think I'm, I'm like everyone else. I'm anxious to get on with life, you know, and it's like, and everything is on hold. And to me, it, it hasn't become normal yet. I, you know, I haven't found myself in this new situation. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if things don't go back to normal, um, who knows what will happen? I mean, the only thing I'm quite glad about is that uh, it has sprung a kind of discussion, at least in Sweden, about uh, the way, I mean, a political discussion about how we run society. And, uh, you know, for instance, part of the reason they say that uh, the disease has taken so much grasp in Sweden and in the elderly population in Sweden is that we've privatized our whole uh, elderly um, uh, community, so our, our homes for, for elderly people. And we've privatized a lot of hospitals that are not running correctly. And, you know, these kinds of discussions that we're having, uh, I think something positive might come of that, you know, to see like, is this, uh, have have we sort of privatized too much of our countries and maybe it's time to look back to see like how much should we run collectively and together uh, i think that's a really good thing that will come out of this thank you very much real cool points uh harden your turn well similar things maybe things that i can add here i mean and it's, it's a changing thing every day. I mean, just yesterday, I was, we were talking with the, uh, some other uh, colleagues from this uh, sector, and one of the CEOs of the, one of the bigger venues in Istanbul, he was saying like, okay, it's actually not bad at all. Like, 
being in this situation for another year with the same conditions, like working at home, having that kind of uh, lowered, let's say, uh, business, and etc. etc. And I could go on for that for another year. He said, like it's a lot of less stress uh, in some uh, at some point, but then also a lot of uh, stress because of the uncertainty of things and that uh, nothing will stay the same. Uh, I mean, I'm not deeply worried personally. Maybe I should, but I'm not deeply worried of getting uh, sick of Corona. But probably for most of us, it's more worrying that uh, how the world as we know it will change or is changing because of all these things things that we cannot control, how they are going to be and how they are going to affect our life. That's more troublesome, I would say. Otherwise, I'm just uh, complaining myself that I don't wake up early and try to go to the Bosphorus to see some dolphins, for example. I really want to do that at some point, if possible. But like daily life, sometimes it's very okay and even uh, nice because we don't have the stresses we had back then, maybe. But also, we're troublesome because we don't just don't know what's going to happen next. Cool. Uh, thank you for your notes, Arden. Yes, Francesca, how do you feel? Okay, so, uh, as I was saying before, something, and uh, my idea is that we should hope, at least I hope, that everything will be, we go, we go back to normal in a certain way, then probably with some differences, but at least I really hope that we can start to live in a free way and to move freely all around and to meet and to do what, what we used to do before this nightmare. But of course, the more careful we are now in this phase two, let's say, in this reopening, the better it is and it will be for sure. So what I'm scared talking really about the virus and this and, and what will happen is this is that the reopening could could not be I don't know um, respected that all the the the, 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 the guidelines are not respected because I see that many people are like, you know, they are like they dare to, you know, to, to, they want to, to not to be serious. They are like, you know, they, they don't care. Some of them, many of them is what I'm seeing. So, and about our, our, our job, I think, you know, of course we are doing a lot of digital, a lot of streaming, like, whatever it's good now but nothing can replace the life experience the the the, the life experience that is in in the clubs and in in the, for the festivals also in the theaters or all the culture the, the cultural sector and it's 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 a live experience so well, i really hope that hope that soon we can we can start again with, with what we are, what we want to do so it's, it's that. Uh, Francesca, just for the records, I really admire uh, you guys uh, being uh, super strong in uh, all of this. Uh, you guys are located in Italy and you were the uh, hardest and the first uh, hit. While most of us, I don't think, uh, I think most of us uh, wasn't really sure about, you know, how big it was. I mean, me personally, uh, I got it quite early and see what was coming. But a lot of my colleagues, so many people, like in, I mean, I could say in Istanbul, it wasn't really uh, taken seriously, even until the beginning of April, first week, you know, like it's just a couple of weeks that, you know, uh, they were super scared and, you know, taking action. Uh, so, I mean. Thanks. I, I was the first one to be, in isolation, also before my colleagues, also before the, the national lockdown, because I've been at home since uh, the 4th of March mm. because of my personal, let's say, experience. So I was 
isolated, alone at home, when all the others could go around. Uh, then after one week, there was the, the first lockdown. But actually, it's, now it's been almost two months that I've been, let's say, at home. And I also have been in quarantine in, in, the, in the 14 days that I really couldn't go, not even to go, to, to go shopping for the food forever. People had to bring me stuff. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite tough. But again, since I'm, I'm scared, I became scared of what I've, I've, we have lived and I've lived. So what I think is that we have to go on like that for some more time. Uh, and we don't have to jump the steps, you know, to go to ahead in order to avoid to start again because the risk and what, what I'm scared of is that if people are not serious on that and they behave uh, in, a, in the wrong way, we have to start it again from the beginning. That, that would be a real disaster. So if anyone respects all the let's say the, the guidelines, the restrictions and everything, and they are careful. And if there is a reopening, what I think is that to start and go out just for real things, not just, you know, you have to be responsible. You have to act, behave like that. Otherwise we start everything again and that, that will be a real disaster. So finger crossed for this and I hope people, honestly me, I won't go, out. <laughs> I will go out for, for the, the necessities, of course, maybe to have a walk when there is nobody around, but honestly, I want, I want to wait a little bit more. Thank you for your notes. We love you. Uh, I'm glad uh, you guys are at least recovering for the moment. Nadine, uh, thank you for staying by the way. You should have had to go, but you didn't. Looks like uh, you also might have liked it. Uh, so what's, what's your point? How do you feel? And then we wrap it up. Well, I, I really don't have anything to add after this uh, personal, after, after what Francesca said, because she has been experienced this, the, the brutality of this virus in a very, very different way, in a personal way. And also in Italy, it's such a different situation than in all of our our countries and yeah let's hope for the best and let's kind of try to stick to the rules be patient and and just st in a way stay connected and and stand together and i think we really need to be patient you know and and to kind of accept this slowing down process and to try of course our very best to stay healthy i have a son and the school will they will reopen um, the school next week and they are dividing the classes now into smaller groups and every second day they might be uh, they, they they might be able to return to school but only some of the classes here in germany and in berlin and also there I was wondering like, okay, uh, of course for the kids, uh, th these are small steps back to, to a normal or more normal life, but on a very practical level, it's in a way also crazy, like just to imagine all of these kids, they go to school on their way to the school and then they need to keep distance and also within the class, classes, keeping distance and all of this and no sports, no other activities and then going home again into isolation. I, it's all of this is so hard to imagine. If anybody would have told us like six months ago or whatever that this might happen and also all of these restrictions and and everything that that's just unbelievable. So I just hope for the very best and try to kind of um, do my very best to 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 help people surrounding us, to call friends, to call family, and um, to also fight this isolation in, a, in, in the best and most positive way possible. 
thank you for all of your precious time and i'm looking really much forward to seeing you uh, uh, very soon uh, especially the friends that are not in berlin um i hope some of these notes were helpful for some people and it will definitely be useful in a way to document ourselves and 20 years from now we look at these videos and have a glass of wine together uh hoping to see you again thank you very much guys love you